Miryalamitta is an obscure village that has been out of human contact for 90 years. These are people who have voluntarily stayed out of human touch. Think like the Sentinelese tribe of Andaman Nicobar. This village though is interesting. Their ideas of beauty are different. Their outlook on life or death are different. But they also have an interesting relationship with the language English. A local politician sends a teacher to win over the people and bring them into the constituency by pretending to be an English teacher. Enter Harsha, a social studies teacher who is greedy as they come. The kind of money-minded guy who wants a promotion, money, prestige, he enters the village. Now, this is a winning premise and kudos to writer, director Kalyan Santosh for grabbing your attention immediately. And then there is Harsha who's diving into the plot. When you watch him in the initial bits, you realize how much emoting you could get done if we didn't focus on making our heroes look good or dangerous or badass. Short on stunning real locations near the Aruku Valley, the film also appears to tackle themes like democracy, greed and consumerism. It has everything going for it. But a film that is so different also needs treatment that stands out. Unfortunately, the treatment here is campy. I wish the makers trusted the audience a little bit. Challenge us, make us connect the dots. Instead, the film wants to thrust information down your throat with spectacular exposition. Characters are expressly saying out everything happening. If they're not, they're writing letters. If not that, then their thoughts are being explicitly told out. You know, like, what ain't he a chest nado? Camera ain't he record chest nadi? We ain't he tenu lomat lardu nado? It's the film's main strength, a linguistic quirk that is introduced becomes its biggest enemy. Characters saying mind blowing and you know what? In the middle of their preachy lines just throw you off. The film also undergoes a 180 degrees tonal shift. Everybody is preaching and precious screen time that could have been spent on peeking into the lives of the villagers is spent in vapid pursuits. Important actions are all explained out and so the film becomes a dull, talky kind of a film. The outdated idea that villagers all lead simple, pious lives and are happy people and we in the city who have left our homes in comfort are all shallow and materialistic. These pop philosophical ideas reduce even actors like Divya Shripada into unrelatable moral science teachers. How do they live? How do they cope? There is a lack of action in the film. It's like the director said, sound, camera, preach. The film tries to be a bit of Into the Wild, a little bit of Newton, Swades and even Yojimbo. But it does a disservice to its form. Plot points lie butchered in the corner and conflicts are resolved through letter writing. Logical loopholes cry out to you. By the time it all ends, you feel a sense of tiredness. As a critic, I do understand how difficult a film like Sundara Master must have been to set up and to pull off that the makers and the actors, they all took a risk with the noblest of ideas. But as a critic, it is also true that the film doesn't respect its viewers too much. In the movie, there's an old man smoking a chillum on top of the rocks talking to the hero. That's what the film seems like in the end. The film sells its soul, its unique, funny, living character in order to become a wise man. And as a result, it becomes a vapid husk of a film. Sundaram Master, Patal Gante, Goda Pata Lekku Chappad. Thank you so much for watching our review of the movie. If you liked it, please subscribe to Film Companions on YouTube by pressing the bell icon. Thank you.